Hi, I'm Sterling Edwards. Thank you for joining me today. I'd like to take a few minutes and show you my approach for painting trees. Uh, in this case, we're looking at autumn trees. Lots of very nice uh, yellows, oranges, reds, and we'll incorporate some brown also. Now, before I get started, let me, let me point out a couple things about my philosophy for painting a tree. Uh, I travel a lot and teach workshops, and I see people quite often taking little brushes and dabbing leaves and dabbing this. And I'm going to show you how to paint a tree very quickly uh, using primarily larger flat brushes. Now, in doing this, uh, this frees you up as an artist. It gives you much more uh, movement, much more expressive brush, uh, brush work. And instead of the piece looking overworked, it looks very fresh and very loose. Now, before I start the demonstration, let's take a look at some of the materials we're going to use for this. The paper I'm using is a piece of, uh, this is Fabriano 140-pound Artistico cold-pressed paper. It has a very, very smooth surface. It's, a, it's an excellent watercolor paper. It's a rag paper. It's a cotton paper. I'm also using the paints over here, My Merry Blue, and I'll be using primarily the colors on this side of my palette, which are my warm colors, yellows, oranges, browns, and reds. I have two containers for water. And I have a roll of toilet tissue that has paper towel wrapped around it, which I use as a blotter just to get the excess water out of my brush. Uh, that's the best way there is to prevent getting those annoying blossoms and back runs. And other than that, I'm using just a, a piece of gator board. My uh, mounting board is a piece of gator board, which is uh, just a very lightweight foam core product. And the paint, paper is taped down just a plain masking tape. And the brushes I'll be using for this demonstration, I'm using a one inch a number eight round, and I'm going to use a rigger, only three brushes. Now most of the foliage we're going to paint with a one inch flat brush. Now this is where it gets fun because typically we think we have to get the little tiny brushes out and dabble leaves to make an autumn tree, but we're going to use the one inch flat brush just to go in there and kind of scumble some shapes, and we're also going to charge some colors. So when I say charge colors, what I'm talking about is once you have a wet shape, while that shape is wet, drop another wet color into it and let watercolor do its magical thing, which it will do. The colors will fuse and get these beautiful uh, secondary colors and even you know, third colors as the colors mingle on their own. It's a very fun way to paint, and I think you'll enjoy this demonstration because it might loosen you up a little bit, which is the biggest request I get at workshops. People say, please help me loosen up. I paint too tight. Well, let's do a loose autumn tree. I'm starting out on dry paper. What I'm going to do first, if you've gone to my palette, is we're going to just mix up a nice mix of some Indian yellow. Now, mix quite a bit. Make sure you've got a nice watery pool of color. You don't want to run out in the middle of your painting and have to stop and mix more. I'm also going to mix some Orange Lake. It's a very, very nice, clean, transparent orange. And again, I'm mixing quite a bit. And I'm also going to mix some Permanent Red Deep. So I've got three colors all very warm, yellow, orange, and red. And I'm going to put one cool color, which is permanent violet bluish. Now the permanent violet bluish, if I mix this with the yellow, it becomes very muddy and very gray. The same thing if I mix it with the orange. But I can mix the permanent violet bluish with the red and get a very nice shadow side of the tree. So we're going to establish where our light is coming from. Uh, part of the tree will be in the sunlight, it'll be mostly yellow and orange. And then as the tree goes away from the sun, we'll start getting into the oranges and reds, and eventually the reds and the violets. So it gives you a nice uh, three-dimensional look on the tree. So let's start with the Indian yellow. Let's go back to paper and see if we can't just start scumbling in what it looks like to paint the outside shape of the tree. Now I'm holding the brush. If you can see the brush, it's almost parallel to the paper. I'm really not getting in like this and trying to hunker down and make little individual shapes. Instead, what I'm doing is I'm using the flat part of the brush right here to very lightly touch the paper. I'm putting very little pressure. In fact, it's almost just the, just the weight of the brush that's resting on the paper. And as you can see, I get these very strong, uh, very leafy shapes. And I'm, I'm going to do it fairly quickly so the paper stays wet because I want to come back in and charge some color into this. So don't spend too much time on any particular area. Now let's come over like this. And I want you to notice how I'm moving my hand. It's not all just going like this or going like this. We're coming in like this, all different angles, because we're trying to make the outside edge of this tree very leafy. And it's the outside edge that people will look at and determine what the shape is. It's not the inside dimensions. It's not the inside detail. It's the outside. 
So here I've got just a nice leafy exterior of this tree. Now while that's wet, let's come into some of the orange lake and start working. The sunlight is coming in like this. In fact, let's just have a little arrow telling us where the sunlight is coming from. Now let's start working in some orange lake into some of these shapes. Not all the way up into the yellow, but just kind of encroaching on just a little bit. And again, I'm just barely pressing down that brush. Now I'm going to come into some of the red. This is the permanent red deep. And I'm going to go right into that orange while it's still wet. And I can drop a little bit over here just to uh, keep the color kind of moving throughout the shapes. And I'm, I'm thinking to myself as I do this, I don't want this tree to look like a lollipop. I don't want it to be just perfectly round. I'm trying to give this thing some nice interesting shapes, some interesting uh, outside edges. But always remember, whether you're painting a tree or anything else, it's that outside edge that people will interpret. That's what tells people what you're painting. It's not all the little things you put in the middle. Now let's move down to the violet. The violet will mix with this red beautifully. It gives me a nice shadow side of the tree. And I can put some more red into it, kind of working in like this. And kind of work it up into a few of these areas. And again, very lightly, any area that looks like it might be out of the sunlight, we're putting a little bit of the violet and letting it kind of merge with the red. And you can see how, how leafy looking this tree is now. These colors really stand out, especially on this white paper. This is a wonderful way to paint, and uh, a lot of this is brush control, just learning how to manipulate the brush and how to manipulate colors. But once you learn how to do this, it's just like somebody opens a door for you. So now we have a nice gradation of color from the sunlit side of the tree, kind of moving down into the orange, into the red, and eventually down into the violets, which is away from the light. Now the next thing we need to do is see about putting a trunk on this tree. So for the trunk, I'm going to use a different brush. I'm going to use a number eight round brush. Now let's go back over to the palette just for a second and mix a few of these colors up. I'm mixing the orange lake with the violet. Orange lake and violet give me a very beautiful uh, kind of a brownish orange color, which looks wonderful for, uh, for painting tree trunks. Now let's just have the ground right here. And I want to bring a tree trunk right up into the, uh, the foliage I've painted. When I paint the tree, give the tree a little bit of movement. Don't just paint a, a shape like a telephone pole. Give the tree some, uh, some pretty movement, make it kind of fluid. While that shape is wet, let's pop some purple into it, some of the violet, just in a few places. And that's going to eventually uh, kind of mold into the color that's already there. And give us just a nice texture of bark. Now I can come up here in the upper areas, these little windows I have in the painting. Let's bring a few branches up in here. It's a very, very easy way to paint a tree, and it's a very, uh, very convincing way to paint a tree, because people will look at this, and they will see all the, uh, the small branches kind of weaving through the open windows of the tree. At the base of the tree, we can paint a little bit of grass by taking the same brush. Now, if the light's coming in like this, we're getting some shadow up underneath that tree. Let's just put a little shadow kind of extending out. And I'm taking the flat, uh, I'm sorry, I'm taking the number eight round brush, and I'm scumbling in some grass. I'm laying the brush parallel to the paper, and just very lightly kind of pulling up on the grass. <coughs> And I get this nice shape of a shadow, this nice uh, suggestion of uh, grass and weeds and so forth. And let's take it one step further, as long as we're playing with it. Let's go ahead and have another little sidekick. Here's a little tree coming up right here. This is just a little sprout. It kind of adds a little more dimension to this painting. And I do this quite often in my landscapes. Uh, one tree by itself almost looks a little bit isolated. If you put a little small sprout sticking up beside it, uh, suddenly it it's, it's almost has a uh, uh, much more uh, pleasing appearance. It's more compositionally interesting. 
And it kind of challenges the viewer to interpret just that much more. Watercolor painting, as with most painting, now I'm also an oil painter and I'm also a, uh, a tr an acrylic painter. And I learned a long time ago, if you, if you leave something to the imagination, it, it, it works wonders. People love to use their mind. They love to fill in the blanks, give people just enough information to make a decision as to what that color or what that shape is. Put the information out there, but leave some open spots. Let them look at that and let them try to imagine what it is and they'll very creatively fill in the blanks and make their own determinations. This is a very simple way to paint a tree. Now if you want to do the same tree as a uh, spring tree, for example, just change the colors. You can start out with the, with, with the Indian yellows and start working some blues and some greens into it and then down towards the bottom you with a darker blue which will give you the shadow side of the tree. It's a very quick little demonstration but it's a very effective way to paint a tree. If you'll practice a few of these, uh, you'll be knocking these out in no time. Okay, this is a very simple little tree, but it's a, it's a good exercise. It will help you loosen up, and uh, I think you'll have fun trying this. Try a few of these. Try some autumn trees. Try some of the earthy colors. Try some spring trees. But the main thing is just know how to use that brush. Have fun with it. Make the shapes very suggestive. It's amazing how far this technique will take you. In fact, I'm using the brushes today that I designed. This is a whole set of brushes that I re recently designed. It's a combination of flat brushes and round brushes, and they seem to work quite well, especially if these loose watercolor techniques. I hope you've enjoyed this demonstration, and I hope you'll also take a few moments to look at my website, sterlingedwards.com. Be sure and check my workshop calendar. I might be coming to a location near you if you'd like to attend a workshop. Thank you for joining me today. Have a good day.